Howdy folks, and welcome back. We've jumped ahead in the release timeline of Assassin's Creed games to Platinum, the most current game, at least at the time of this recording. Red, of course, comes out in September, and you bet your ass I'm going to be getting that plat. So, let's first talk Mirage. It came off the heels of Valhalla, an admittedly contentious entry into the mainline series. I think people may have been a little tired of the RPG mechanics of the newer AC games and wanted Ubisoft to go back to the old AC roots. And to an extent, I would argue they actually did a pretty good job of that, though I recognize this is not the opinion held by many others. That being the case, though, I truly loved Mirage. It was a lot shorter than more of the recent games, but that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, not only did I just really like Basim and his voice actor, they also did or had a really strong story and knew exactly how they wanted to represent Baghdad during the Islamic Golden Age. Uh, side note, a fantastic point in time and history for any history buff. Uh, my only real qualm with the game was the admittedly confusing ending, but that's that's all I'm going to say on it. I don't want to spoil it further. I should say that this game is still relatively new and some trophies do spoil parts of the game. So consider this your first and final warning. Uh, with that, though, there are 51 trophies, including the platinum up for grabs. So let's throw that up on the board and begin. The game starts off as any normal AC game would. We're just sort of getting to know our character. In this case, we're playing as Basim, and we meet our unlikely protagonist as he runs for his life after being accused of killing the Caliph. So real quickly before we continue, I should talk about the language here. Um, so in the game, they pronounce Caliph as Khalif. Um, obviously, of course, they're using Arabic. Specifically, they're using classical Arabic, according to Ubisoft. So. In that case, Ubisoft actually did an incredible job of getting voice actors who actually know classical Arabic and can make the pronunciations possible. Uh, while I have attempted to learn Arabic, I am really bad at it. And for that, I will be using the westernized pronunciation so as to not make your ears bleed. I really apologize for anybody who speaks Arabic native or otherwise, uh, and who would have wished I would have tried my hand at the pronunciations. I think this way we'll just make it easier for everyone. Of course, that being said, we do get Master Thief of Anbar for completing the prologue. We are now officially on the board, and there is no turning back. This game will be completed. Upon being rescued from certain death, we are inducted into the Brotherhood of the Hidden Ones, and we finally start our training. After completing the initiation, becoming a full-fledged assassin, we obtain our next trophy. Um... Uh, th this one, I I can't pronounce it, but we'll try. Lashaya Wakun Mutlak. Uh, this marks the beginning of the open world and our first real introduction to Baghdad. I am a man of cleanliness, of course, and so I decide to become a temporary street cleaner and help, you know, clean up the mess that someone else made. And you can't prove it was me. All we gotta do is hide five bodies in bales of hay, though it does not have to be the same hay bale unlike certain other Assassin's Creed games. Ah, a true hidden one knows the art of the silent death. To achieve our next trophy, we must put all our illicit skills to the test, taking out ten guards in a row without triggering open combat. A relatively easy feat for most. This is quickly followed up with Treasure Seeker. Throughout the game, you will obtain three different tokens. In this case, using a merchant token on the specific chest is what will help us obtain this trophy in particular. Ah, oh, this is a fun one. So Mirage brings back the wanted system. You commit crimes, you become more wanted, and so on and so forth. If you max out the bar at the bottom, these elite units called Shakarias will hunt you down. Killing one gives you not only the shadow and the flame trophy, but it also completely resets your wanted level, which is just pretty cool too. Surprise, motherfucker! Is earned after you successfully assassinate ten guards from hiding spots. Wait, what? This is another relatively easy trophy you will obtain simply by playing the game. Some would say in Baghdad you would be crossing paths with many individuals. Well, in Mirage, it's no different. With twelve quick little side missions called Tales from Baghdad, this trophy pops after completing your first one. Like most AC games, there is some level of crafting involved. In this case, you can upgrade each weapon or piece of armor three times to unlock more perks for it. 
thick skin is acquired when you fully upgrade an outfit. The reason this is slightly more difficult is you actually have to find the three matching recipes, you can't just use resources. Unlike the previous RPG Assassin's Creed games, you don't get a bow. Your ranged murder weapon of choice is the throwing knife. So Headhunter can only be achieved after you introduce 20 knives into the soft, meaty parts of an enemy's head. This trophy kind of blowed. Notorious requires you to be at the highest wanted level for 10 minutes. I get that maybe this was designed so you had to keep dodging the shakarias and moving in and out of hiding places, but <laughs> if I'm honest, I just sat up on this roof and went to take a poop. 0 out of 10 trophy, 10 out of 10 poop. I highly recommend doing Poster Boy right after obtaining Notorious, since they just require the same thing. You have to, of course, be at max notoriety. Poster Boy just makes you get rid of that notoriety by tearing down posters. Alright, alright, let's get back to our regularly scheduled story mission trophies. Mirage continues the tradition of hunting down those who are part of the Order of Ancients. If I'm being honest, I need to start getting back into or more into the timeline lore as I'm interested to see when the Hidden Ones officially become the Assassins. I'd also be interested to know if the Order of Ancients then moves into and becomes the Templar Order or if they are two separate groups. Okay, anyway, after watching what was an absolutely badass kill, our next trophy pops, the Blood of a Ghoul, which itself is a pretty cool name since the guy you killed is called Al Ghul, or Al Ghul. Anyway, look at those achievements being cheeky in their naming scheme. Mirage adds a lot of miscellaneous trophies. So long as you're paying attention, you can get these pretty easily. In this case, Silencer has you destroy a horn bearer's horn with a throwing knife. As you could see there, I thought you had to destroy it while it was on his belt. Nope, that sucker's got plot armor till the bearer actually lifts it. Okay, so Potion Collector was just kind of a gimme trophy. I thought you had to get 10 charges of your health potion, like 10 charges of an Estus Flask in Dark Souls. No, not the case. You just have to buy 10 potions throughout the game. It's stupid easy. Remember those tokens I had mentioned before? Well, there are three types, and there's a trophy attached to each one of them. In this case, Spread the News requires you to use the services of Munati three times to get rid of your notoriety level. No game is complete without a little customization. Fashion Statement requires you to apply a die to an outfit. You can find dies out in the world, get them from side missions, or even main missions. Keep in mind that a die only goes with a certain outfit, which I thought was kind of a cool little gimmick. At his core, Bassam is still a sneak thief, and pickpocketing is in his blood. What that comes with is the hands of a thief, where you must pickpocket 50 people. This was just sort of a fun little minigame, super quick and non-intrusive, but was your main source of income outside of contract missions. Fun literature history lesson, the Epic of Gilgamesh, according to historians, is the oldest written known story and was loosely based off the actual historical figure, King Gilgamesh. All this to say, your eagle Enkidu is a major character from that tale, being an overpowered wild man that, long story short, Gilgamesh befriends. Why is any of this important? It's, I mean, it's really not. I just like adding historical context to these videos sometimes. And the trophy you get, Birds of Prey, is acquired when you tag 100 guards using Enkidu. Much like its armor counterpart, Cutting Edge requires you to upgrade a weapon to its max level. Nothing too out of the ordinary here. Let's just move on. We get our second of four, I had misspoken earlier, medallion trophies with Patron of Swords for paying mercenaries to kill on our behalf at least five times. I didn't use these guys as much as I should have because they're pretty damn strong. Our next trophy pops with Defender of the People, and you get it after completing 10 faction contract missions. You'll need to complete a majority of these so that you can get enough skill points for a later trophy, so don't sit on these and remember, get them done. This was another one of those just dumb trophies. Eagle's Will requires you to stay in open combat for 10 minutes. So I get into combat, set a timer, and put music on in the background as I taunted this guard until the trophy popped and I killed him. These time-based trophies just sort of kind of suck. There are five usable items, not counting the torch, that have trophies tied to them. The first one I unlock is Eagle's Eye for killing 75 guards with throwing knives. Nice, straightforward, let's move on. 
According to PSN profiles, this is the only missable trophy. You snooze, you lose, requires you to pickpocket a guard affected by a blow dart. What I recommend, as I saw when researching this game, was to blow dart one of the 10 mysterious shard carriers. I also recommend you upgrade your blow dart so the victims can't actually wake up, no matter what. On to item trophy number two. Ambush requires you to use the trap. This was a fun little tool, and I honestly ended up using it a lot more than I originally thought I would. Item trophy number three is using the blow dart. Sleep tight requires you to put 10 guards to sleep. So make sure that you have the blow dart tuned for the sleep darts instead of the rage dart ability, otherwise it just won't work. Back to the story missions. This mission has us hunting down the second order member, and we also receive the first of two disguises, which are used in a later trophy. The Blood of a Demon, while a cool sounding name, doesn't have the same cheeky naming scheme as the other one, so, you know, I'm a little disappointed in that, but it's still a trophy, so I won't complain too much. Item trophy number four uses the aptly named Noisemakers to obtain the even more on the nose trophy, Attention Seeker. With 10 distractions, this trophy pops, and we continue moving forward in our bountiful platinum quest. This trophy was more tedious than I first thought it would be. Hoarder requires you to save up to the oddly specific amount of 2007 dirhams, but it's actually a cute little Easter egg since this is AC's 15th anniversary, and AC1 came out in, you guessed it, 2007. I think I've finally figured out why every so often the PS5 won't record the trophy popping. I think it has to do with how quickly I then get the backup recording. So typically what I do is when the trophy pops, I get the last three minutes of gameplay footage as well. If I do this too soon, then the PS5 doesn't have time to like complete the trophy capture and sort of wipes over it. Anyway, all of this to say is I goofed this trophy. Master of the Arts is for using the musicians five times using their special coins. So sorry about that, but this is the only one in this video. So, you know, progress. Our final item-based trophy is Up in Smoke, which just requires you to affect 20 guards with smoke bombs. Personally, my favorite support weapon outside of the throwing knives. Story kill numero tres comes to us in the form of Blood of the Enchantress. It was a nice and relatively tame kill, but with it, we are three order members down, only a few more to go. Like Origins, this game has a waiting feature to change the day from, well, the day to night. Unlike Origins, it only requires we do it five times instead of 30. Dawn and Dusk is the culmination of waiting five times. Being a patron of industry myself, I find it useful to assist the local merchants. Giving them tokens for their support and concealing my approach also grants us a beautiful trophy. Early on in the game, you obtain Assassin's Focus. This lets you stop time, mark a certain amount of enemies based on your focus bars, and kill them all. Unstoppable requires you to kill five enemies with one focus. It's not particularly hard, but you have had to have unlocked the necessary perks to have all five bars. The Blood of a Spy Master rounds us out to four Order members meeting the business end of the Hidden Blade. Now all we have to do is unmask and find, and then, you know, give the ol' stab stab, to the head of the Order here in Baghdad. Remember that disguise from earlier in the game? Well, here's where we get that second one, obtaining Masquerader, and bringing us one step closer to that beautiful Platinum Trophy. This is another story-based trophy. Serving the light is obtained once you reach the Hidden One's max rank, and you rank up after each story kill. And with the stroke of a blade that eh, may or may not have been ours, the head of the serpent falls, and the Order Leader bites the dust. More importantly, we obtain our 40th trophy with only 11 left. I am not even going to attempt to spoil the ending of this game, but with Baal Kulun Mumkin, the main story of Assassin's Creed Mirage is complete. Now, all we have left is the cleanup. Let's get to it. One of the many collectibles that you are required to get and needed for a later trophy is you that of Dorvish's Curios, unlocking Curio Collector. Get all 18, turn them in, and get rewarded with the trophy. Self-improvement is easy, just unlock all the skills. Thing is, the main story does not actually give you enough points to max out the skill tree. You'll have to do this by at least doing some contract side missions like I had mentioned before. 
Another collectible is that of the lost books. Scholar requires you to bring all seven books back to the librarian. Here's the thing though, there's only six books you can see on the map. There is a seventh cursed book you will have to find. I'll give you a hint though. In the westmost part of the wilderness is where you will find it. As is a staple in Assassin's Creed games, there are the synchronization points. Find all of them and be rewarded with Fearless. Not only do you need them for a trophy, but it'll help finding the other collectibles easier. I mean, obviously. So those tools you have each have three different upgrades. Tools of the Trade is unlocked when you max out all of them. You will need resources, but I recommend outside of contracts, you just buy them from the stores. It's a lot easier than finding them out in the world. Okay, so Blade in a Crowd was irritating to get because you have to kill 10 guards while blended into a crowd. Originally, I struggled with this as it was hard for me to find enough people in an area to be considered in a crowd and have a guard nearby that I could kill. Now, I could lure them over with the whistle, but they still had to be in whistling range. So, I did a quick search online and saw this great trick of using merchants and focus to get more than one kill. And let me tell you, do this. This saved me so much hassle. I just have to be honest with you guys, Gifted Escapist is a grind. You need to topple 20 scaffolding structures and they aren't super common, nor will you use them very often. When you get to this point, Look at a map online of their locations and just plot a path to run. You'll unlock it eventually. Okay, so this is funny. Riddle me this should not have taken me till the end to actually achieve this, but eh, so be it. All you have to do is solve an Enigma puzzle and the trophy is yours. You'll acquire all the Enigma puzzles as they are also necessary for our next trophy. Explorer is what I would call the 100 percenter trophy. You have to fully explore the whole map and pick up every collectible and do all the things. Do that, and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, you get the trophy. And of course, at the end of the road, with no introduction necessary, we achieve the platinum trophy for Assassin's Creed Mirage, Master of His Fate. With that, the game is complete and we add another platinum trophy to the collection. I really enjoyed Mirage. It had its few downsides, of course, but overall, the game had a great story, great gameplay, and just it didn't overstay its welcome. Ubisoft did a fantastic job of toning back their formula, uh, you know, after the rightful criticism of Valhalla, and they came out with a banger of a game. I'm looking forward to what I imagine to be a much larger game with Red, but eh, we'll see come September. This, of course, leaves only five AC games left, Unity, Syndicate, Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla. I'm currently actually working through Valhalla, but that requires near 100 hours for the Platinum, so I'll probably do an off and on with other AC games. So with that, I can't actually be certain which one will be coming out next. As well, I have a couple achievement videos in the works, and most importantly, I have Constantine's Adventure Episode 2 coming out later this week, whether that be on Monday or Saturday, I'm not sure yet. Real life is real life. I wanna thank everybody who's recently subscribed and joined the channel. I truly appreciate all the support and look forward to providing you all with more content. And of course, I always appreciate your patience. With that, please remember to of course, like, comment, and subscribe for that beautiful YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.